Hi, it's Miss Vital. This podcast is on vertebrates and it is meant for AP biology. Vertebrates are deuterostomes and there are two modern phyla, echinoderms and chordates. The phylum chordata includes urochordates and cephalochordates, which are in vertebrates and vertebrates. All chordates share four structures that appear at some point during the animal's lifetime. The notochord present in all chordate embryos. It is a longitudinal flexible rod located between the digestive tube and the nerve cord. Large fluid filled cells in stiff fibrous tissue make up the notochord. It provides skeletal support. The notochord remains in the adult invertebrate chordates and some primitive vertebrates. In most vertebrates, it's replaced by a skeleton and only remnants of of the notochord remain. For example, the discs between the vertebrae and our back. The dorsal hollow nerve cord is a plate of ectoderm in embryos that rolls into a tube located dorsally, which is above the notochord. A hollow nerve cord forms. Other animals have solid nerve cords. The dorsal hollow nerve cord develops into the central nervous system, which is the brain and spinal cord. The pharyngeal or gill slits is where water enters the mouth and leaves via the pharyngeal slits. This way, the water doesn't go through the entire digestive system. The pharyngeal slits function for suspension feeding in invertebrate chordates. They become the gills in fish, and they become jaw support, hearing, and etc. in other vertebrates due to evolution. The muscular postanal tail is in most chordates. They have a tail which extends past the anus. We are an example of an animal that does not. The tails are skeletal and muscular, and they provide forward motion in aquatic species. The first subphylum in the chordata phylum is the urochordata. These are also called tunicates or sea squirts. They are sessile, they adhere to rocks, docks, boats, etc., and they are marine, meaning that they live in salt water. A few species are plankton or colonial, and the entire animal is covered with a cellulose-like carbohydrate covering, which is why they're called tunicates, because it looks like a tunic. The adult doesn't have a notochord, a nerve cord, or a tail, but it does have the pharyngeal slits. The next subphylum is the cephalochordata. These are called lancelets because they're shaped like a blade. All four features, the notochord, dorsal hollow nerve cord, gill slits, and postanal tail is present in the adult. They live in sand at the bottom of the ocean near the coast. They don't live in a lot of places, but are found in huge concentrations in Tampa, Florida. They are suspension feeders. They can swim. They have muscles arranged alongside of the notochord, which they flex, and it produces a side-to-side movement. The muscles form overlapping um, angles, which are evidence of segmentation. The muscle segments develop from blocks of mesoderm called the somites in the embryo. Lancelets are the closest relative to vertebrates, and tunicates are the second closest relative to vertebrates. And the next subphylum in the phylum chordata are the vertebrates. One of the characteristics of a vertebrate is the neural crest. This is a group of cells in the embryo that form on the dorsal side of the neural tube. The The neural crest contributes to the formation of bone and cartilage. Cephalization is a concentration of sense organs and nerves in the head end. In vertebrates, the cranium, which is the brain case, and the brain, eyes, and ears, and the nose are all shown in a high degree of cephalization. The brain is um, enlarged anterior end of the dorsal hollow nerve tube. Craniata is a name for a clad of animals that have a cranium. It includes hagfish, lampreys, and jawed vertebrates. Craniata have a brain, paired sense organs, and neural crest cells. So vertebrates have a cranium and a vertebral column. The vertebral column surrounds and protects the nerve cord. The skeleton is divided into the axial and appendicular skeleton. The axial skeleton adds to a large body size and strong, fast movement. It includes the rib cage, the skull, and the the backbone. The appendicular skeleton supports two paired appendages. Vertebrates have a closed circulatory system with a ventral chambered heart. 
Jawless vertebrates are called agnathans, and there are two extant or living classes, the hagfish and the lamprey. The class myxnia are the hagfish. They are the most primitive living vertebrates. There are 30 species, and they are all marine, and they are bottom-dwelling scavengers. They have rows of slime glands that secrete slime. They can produce several liters in less than a minute. The slime will coat the gills of a predator, um, or they will chase it away or kill it due to suffocation. Hagfish have a skeleton that is 100% cartilage. They have no true vertebrae, but they do have a cartilage cranium, so they are in the craniata clad. The notochord is a long rod of cartilage. The next class is the cephalospididomorphs, and they are lampreys. There's 35 species, and they are found in marine and fresh water. They have a round mouth with a rasping tongue that makes the hole in the skin of fish. They are predators and parasites. They will clamp onto the side of a fish and suck their blood. The notochord has a cartilage pipe around it. There are pairs of projections along it which partially enclose the nerve cord. This is possibly the early stage in the column of the vertebral column that we have. Hagfish and lampreys lack skeletal support, jaws, and paired appendages. The nanthostome is a clad with hinged jaws and paired appendages. Vertebrate jaws evolved by modification of skeletal rods that previously supported anterior gill slits. The remaining gill slits are used for gas exchange. In the Devonian period, about 360 to 400 million years ago, um, plactoderms and agnathidians existed. The Devonian period was the age of fishes. Placoderms, which are now extinct, were armored jawed fish, and ancathidians, were, which are also extinct, were another type of jawed fish. These two groups radiated and, form, and new forms evolved. An ancestor common to both may have given rise to sharks and bony fish about 425 million years ago. The class Chondrichthys contains sharks and rays. They have all cartilaginous skeletons. Parts of the skeleton are reinforced by mineralized granules. Their teeth are bony. There are 750 extant or living species. They have jaws and paired fins that are well developed. The largest subclass or order of chondrichthys are sharks and rays. There is also a smaller subclass called chimeras, which are ratfish. They have a cartilage skeleton that is derived and the an from ancestors that had bony skeletons. The bony skeleton evolved into cartilage. Most vertebrates begin as cartilage skeletons and are replaced by bone during embryonic development. This phase was modified in chondrichthys. Most sharks have streamlined bodies. They swim fast, but they don't maneuver well. Their large oily liver provides buoyancy but if they stop swimming, they will sink. Continual swimming also moves the water through the mouth and over the gills. If they stop and rest on the bottom, there are muscles of jaws in the pharynx that move water over the gills. Most sharks and rays are predators, but the largest ones are suspension feeders. The largest chondrichthy and the largest fish overall is the whale shark. The digestive tract is straight, but has a spiral valve inside. This is a corkshoe-shaped ridge that increases surface area and prolongs digestion. Their teeth are modified scales. They have good vision but can't see colors. Their nostrils have chemical receptors for smell but not breathing. They also have regions of skin on the head that detect electrical fields, which are created by the muscle contractions of other animals. Their lateral line system is a row of organs head to tail that sense changes in pressure. It detects vibrations. These are caused by movement of other animals. Sound is transmitted through the entire body to an inner ear. Fertilization is internal, and the male has claspers on his pelvic fins that transfer sperm to the female. Some sharks are oviparous, which means they lay egg eggs that hatch outside their bodies. <coughs> other females are ovoviviparous, meaning the eggs stay in the oviduct they're nourished by the yolk and they hatch inside the mother. And a few species are viviparous. The young develop in a uterus nourished by a placenta. The cloaca is a common chamber that 
um, expels through a single vent, the reproductive, digestive, and excretory tracts all empty out of the same opening. Most rays are flat-bottomed dwellers that eat mollusks and crustaceans. Their pectoral fins are like wings, and their tail is whip-like. Osteichthys is the class of bony fish. They're the most numerous class of vertebrates in individuals and species. They can be over 6 meters or 20 feet long. They are found in marine and fresh water. There is new evidence that groups bony fish into three classes, ray-finned, lobe-finned, and lungfish. Bony fish have an ossified endoskeleton with a hard matrix of calcium phosphate. The skin is covered by flat bony scales. There are glands in the skin that secrete mucus that coats the fish with slime. This reduces drag while swimming. They have a lateral line system like we saw it in sharks, and they have an operculum, which is a protective flap over four to five pairs of gills. Water enters the mouth, goes through the pharynx, over the gills, and out the operculum. The movement of the operculum and muscles surrounding the gills helps to move water through the fish's gills. The swim bladder is an air sac that controls buoyancy. The transfer of gas between the blood and the swim bladder allows it to inflate and deflate, allowing the fish to move up and down in the water. Most species are oviviparous. They lay eggs and have external fertilization. Ray fin fish include most fish. Their fins are supported by long, flexible rays. The fins are used for maneuvering, defense, and other purposes. Lobe fin fish have thick, muscular, pectoral, and pelvic fins supported by bones that extend from the skeleton. There is only one living genus, the coelacanth. Lungfish have lungs. They live in the southern hemisphere in stagnant water. They surface the gulp air into the lungs, which connects to the pharynx of the digestive tract. They also have gills, which is the main organ for gas exchange. In Australia, lungfishes will burrow in mud during the dry season and go into a state of topor. Topor is a physiological state that conserves energy by slowing down heart and respiration. Lungfish in the Devonian period were the ancestors of amphibians and other tetrapods. A tetrapod has two sets of paired appendages that are modified as legs that can support the animal on land. It includes amphibians and amniotes, which have the amniotic egg. Amphibian um, includes salamanders, frogs, toads, and caecilians. There are 4,800 species. The order Eurodella includes salamanders, and there's about 500 species of those. The order Angura includes frogs and toads, and there's about 4,200 species. And the order Apoda includes caecilians, and there's about 150 different species. Salamanders are aquatic or terrestrial or both. They retain the tails as adults. They walk with side-to-side -side bending of the body. Frogs and toads have powerful hind legs. They have long sticky tongues for capturing insects. Frog skin glands secrete mucus. Sometimes it is, it is distasteful and even poisonous. Poisonous frogs tend to have bright colors. Caecilians are legless and blind. They are legless because they lost their legs during evolution. They burrow in moist soil in tropical areas. The term amphibian means two lives. The tadpole, which is the frog larvae, is found in the water. It has gills, a lateral line system. It has no legs, and they are herbivores. As it matures, the gills and the lateral line disappear. The lungs and the external eardrum, eardrums develop. Their digestive system changed as, changes from that of an herbivore to that of a carnivore. Not all frogs go through the tadpole stage. Salamanders and Sicilian larvae look like adults, and both are carnivores. Amphibian eggs lack a shell, and they dehydrate in air. They must be laid in a moist environment. Fertiliz fertilization is external. Amphibians also have complex breeding behavior. For the past 25 years, there has been a rapid and alarming decline in amphibian populations throughout the world. The citrate fungus is probably a pathogen that causes it, but acid precipitation and global warming also is a contributing factor. 
Amniotes are a clad of animals that consist of mammals, birds, and reptiles. The evolution of amniotes from amphibian ancestors involved many adaptations for terrestrial living. The amniotic egg enabled terrestrial vertebrates to complete their life cycles on land without an aquatic environment. Their egg has a shell that retains water and can be laid in a dry place. The extra embryonic membrane is specialized membranes within the amniotic egg that is not part of the body of the developing animal. Those membranes function in gas exchange, waste storage, and transfer of stored nutrients to the embryo. The allantois is for is a dispersal sac, a, I'm sorry, a disposal sac for certain metabolic wastes produced by the embryo. It also functions with the chorion as a respiratory organ. The embryo is the developing baby. The chorion and the allantois exchange gas between the embryo and the surrounding air. Oxygen and CO2 diffuse freely across the shell. The yolk is nutrients and the yolk sac expands over the yolk. Blood vessels in the yolk sac transport nutrients from the yolk into the embryo. Other nutrients are stored in the albumin or the white. The amnion protects the embryo in a fluid filled cavity that prevents dehydration and cushions mechanical shock. This is the phylogenetic tree of amniotes. Systematics are revealing the classification of amniotes. During the early Mesozoic era, there were three groups. The synapsids, um, which include mammal-like reptiles from which mammals evolved, the anapsids, which are extinct, and the diapsids. Turtles were originally thought to be the only surviving anapsid, but modern systematics places them with the diapsids, which includes all modern reptiles. During the early Mesozoic, diapsids split into two branches, Lepidosaurs, which were lizard snakes and tuataras, and archosaurs, which were crocodiles, alligators, dinosaurs, and birds. Reptiles have scales that contain keratin, which is a protein for waterproofing. It helps to prevent dehydration. They obtain oxygen with lungs, not through their skin, and most reptile eggs are laid on land. They have leathery shells. They are ectotherms, which means they control their body temperature by using behavioral adaptations. They can live on 10% of the calories as a mammal. The oldest reptile fossils are 300 million years old. About 6,500 species of extant or living reptiles are present. There are four groups, the testudines, which are turtles, tortoises, the sphenodontia, which are tuataras, the squamata, which are lizards and snakes, and the crocodilia, which are alligators and crocodiles. Birds were in the class Aves. They evolved from reptiles. They have an amniotic egg and scales on their legs, which are reptilian features and evidence of evolution. Birds are built for flight. Their bones have internal honeycomb structures, which makes them strong and light. Some organs are missing. For example, the female only has one ovary. They are toothless. Food is ground in their gizzard. Beaks are adapted to a great variety of shapes for a different diet, and teeth weigh more than beaks. Birds are endothermic. We sometimes call them warm-blooded, but it really means that they use their metabolic heat to maintain a constant warm body temperature. Feathers provide insulation. They have a four-chambered heart and lungs with air sacs that supply large amounts of energy and nutrients to their tissues. They have the best eyes of all vertebrates. They have large brains with complex behavior. For example, they have very elaborate courtship rituals. They have internal fertilization via a cloaca. The mother and father brood their eggs. That means that they sit on them to keep them warm. Feathers are made of keratin. It is also the same protein that is in nails and hair and reptile scales. If we look at the origin of birds, their closest relative is the theropods. These are small bipedal carnivorous dinosaurs. Bird ancestors were as a feathered theropod. Feathers are thought to be modified scales for insulation. 
This famous Mesozoic bird um, is similar to reptiles. It has clawed forelimbs, teeth, and a long tail with vertebrae. Fossils of it are found in the Bivarian, Barbarian limestone in Germany, which is about 150 million years old. Modern birds include 8,600 extant species. Some species are flightless, meaning they're ratatites. Carnites are flight birds. The carnia is the sternal keel that supports the large breast muscles. Mammals radiated after dinosaur extinction and fragmentation of the continents. There are about 4,500 extant species. Mammals are characterized by two things that other animals do not have. Mammary glands, which produce milk to nourish the young, and hair, which is made of keratin. Mammals have internal fertilization. The embryo develops in a uterus. The placenta is the lining of the uterus, and it is on the lining of the uterus. It grows from the embryo, and it is where nutrients diffuse into the embryo's blood. Many mammals are capable of learning. Extended time with parents help offspring to learn important survival skills. The differentiation of teeth means that there's a variety of forms and shapes. Incisors and canines are for shearing, and premolars and molars are for crushing and grinding. Mammals evolved from reptiles before birds. The oldest mammal fossil is 220 million years old from the Triassic period. Um, the mammal ancestor was a therapsid. The first group of mammals are monotremes. These are lay egg-laying mammals. The platypus and the echidna, which is a spiny anteater, are the only types of monotremes. Their egg is like that of a reptile. The baby sucks milk from the hair near specialized glands that secrete milk. They are only found in Australia and New Guinea. Marsupials are pouched mammals. A marsupium is the pouch. They are born early and complete their development in the pouch. Opossums are the only North American marsupial. Placenta mammals are the largest group, and they have a longer period of pregnancy. Primates include Homo sapiens and their closest relatives. Primates have hand and feet adapted for gra grasping. That was as for an adaptation for living in trees. They have skin ridges, which creates our fingerprints. They have large brains and short jaws, which give them a flat face. They have forward-looking eyes close together on the front of the face. This creates an overlap, uh, overlapping field of vision, which gives better depth perception. They have flat nails on their fingers and toes, not narrow claws. They have well-developed parental care and complex social behavior. All living primates, except humans, have a big toe widely separated from other toes, again for grasping branches. All primates have an opposable thumb. The thumb is also separated from the fingers. Ours is fully opposable, so we can touch the ventral side of four fingertips. The fully opposable thumb is only found in anthropoids, which are monkeys, apes, and humans. Prosimians are pre-monkeys. Lemurs are a type of prosimium. They resemble the early tree-dwelling primates. Anthropoids include monkeys, apes, and humans. The oldest fossils are 25 million years ago and were found in China. Old, old world monkeys are tree dwellers and ground dwellers. They lack a prehensile tail. They have a tough seat pad. Baboons and rhesus monkeys are examples. Their nostrils open down. New worlds are all tree dwellers. Squirrel and spider monkeys are an example. They have a prehensile tail and their nostrils open to the side. Apes include gibbons, orangutan, gorillas, and chimps. This is a timeline of hominid species. Paleoanthropology is the study of human origins and evolution. A hominoid is a broad term for apes and humans. A hominid is mostly closely related um, to us. It's closer than the chimp or the gorilla. Only the, the only extant species of hominids are us, the homo sapiens. Chimps and humans are two separate branches of the hominoid tree. We did not evolve from chimps. We have bipedal posture. 
The hominoid ancestors walked on all fours. Bipedal posture is upright with two walking legs, and it's only seen in hominids. There is a reduced size difference between sexes. In hominoids, males can be twice as big as the females. That's an example of sexual dimorphism. In humans, the male is only 1.2 times as large as the female. There are key changes in family structure. We can't see this in the fossil records, so we compare humans and present hominoids. In humans, monogamy prevails, not in apes. Human infants are more dependent on their mother and spend much longer time with them.